Hi everyone, it's Nona Grace and I'm from Western New York. I'm a little disappointed in um, Doyle. Blue bike. Blue bike and Doyle, yes. He always notices when I don't put, don't say where I'm from. He's the only one that seems to notice it and he makes comment. Well, I slipped one by him yesterday. My husband, he made the comment that said, I wonder if um, Doyle will catch it. And I said, most likely, he's the only one that usually does. Well, today I said it. I am Nona Grace and I'm from Western New York. Now I've said it twice. <laughs> yep. Okay. Well, today I did a lot of um, watching of videos. I watched a lot of videos. And I did a lot of crocheting. In fact, I was having so much fun with making that bracelet. This is the one I made yesterday. And this is the one I made today. See, I have two. Woohoo! I'm not tricking you. <laughs> like abracadabra. This one is a six inch. I like the, this is just that much smaller. I don't know if you'll be able to tell. It's just that much smaller. See the difference? Yep. And the six inch fits so much better. And it, when you put it on, it just rolls and goes on. It's like those bracelets that people are, I guess, buying from, I don't know where they make them, some country where the women are making them. You know, they put a lot of work into these things if they're making them. Well, today I decided I would try to make another one because these are addictive. So I laced on some more beads. I've got them laced on. This is only the second time on this group of beads too because the first group that I put on, I thought I was going to like it, but the two colors were too close and you couldn't tell. When, until you get the big spiral going, it's really hard because it looks like a big um, mess. And I had it almost and then I noticed one of them, I didn't pull the string tight enough. So I had to start, I, so I undid it again for the maybe fifth or sixth time on this group. And I will try again and I will get it. Apparently I can do it because I've done it twice now, so I can do it again. Um, also, I wanted to talk about, um, I had, I've been watching this one person and it's really good. His channel name is Joe Wells Country. Now he plays a lot of country music, but he makes the videos and the videos are really good. The last one I watched had his dad in it with him, which was really, that'll be a keepsake for sure. He's done other videos where he sings his songs and it was somebody's wedding and that will be a really good keepsake for them. There's a lot of the, the really, his videos are with him in it and they're they're good and it's his playing i don't know if the music is i think the music belongs to something else i don't know exactly because i don't know country music that well to know whether it's a song that's out there or if it's something that he wrote i i can't tell i don't know so but anyways i would like if you like country music you might just like joe wells country or county county country C-O-U-N-T-R-Y, country. 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 <laughs> County and country are two words that confuse me because one has an R and one doesn't. And it looks the same with my eyes. I can reverse letters. I can actually type backwards. I can, I can type so mixed up that it's amazing. When I look at it and read it, it's like, wow, did I do that? And apparently I did. So, a lot of, so there's a lot of corrections always being made with my, with my typing. I type very fast but I type very bad as far as spelling goes. Good, Good thing, thing there's spell checker. That's for sure. Good thing there is spell checker. And when you, whenever you do something in, um, in I think it's in an email or is it WordPerfect or um, Open Office, one of those, they'll say, are you sure you're done? And it will want to check. And so then it's checks and, and a lot of time, and my name is always misspelled. Always they think it's misspelled, but I like it to just stay just as it is. It's not misspelled. But um, also I was w listening to different ones that are talking about trying to lose weight. And they're following their doctor's suggestions, which is probably a wise thing. But you got to remember, those of you that are listening to them, they are following the standard American 
diet regulations, what which they were taught. which they were taught in in their they're, they really don't touch a lot on dietary stuff. I think for the for the doctors, you'd have to go to a dietitian, and then the dietitians are taught the American Standard Diet. Because I know when um, when I was working, they had a dietitian come in to try to tell us how we should be eating, and she was really telling us to eat all the things that are going to make us heavier and telling us that we should eat the six times a day. No, 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 your body doesn't need that. You really don't. And um, there was something else I was going to say. Mmm, darn it. My brain goes. Of course, you're not a doctor, so don't. I'm not a doctor, so you can't doctors. listen to me. I'm just a, a thin lady that had gained 20 some pounds and now it's down. And, um,. <laughs> I know I'm not a doctor. No, no medical stuff going on here. Just, just a Nona stuff. Your opinions. My opinion. Yeah. <laughs> Gosh, I get myself in hot water. And you gotta put that in. Okay. Save, save my soul. Save my. Save myself. Yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, I would say just try to eat like the old timers ate. And the old timers ate. Think of a caveman. A lot of oh, what a well, like I would just say the old timers because yeah, they don't want to do they yeah. don't want to go back to the cavemen. They think that's well, too far back. That's too, too still, prehistoric. Yeah, too. What they don't want to go back to chisel and stone. Go back to the founding fathers, <laughs> right, or something. Yeah. Well, and if you eat the now, like my, my I can go by my own parents. My father, who was ninety three when he passed away, who was stronger than strong. In fact, when he handed my brother-in-law the sledgehammer, when he was hanging on to it, my, my brother-in-law grabbed it and his hands went right straight to the ground because he didn't realize it was as heavy as it was because the way my, my dad just held it out straight, like not a problem. But um, he ate a lot of the um, animal fat and animal um, proteins and we made our own butter and he ate butter and he ate um, lard. We had lard, and we had bacon, and we had beef, and we had. Um, we did eat potatoes and things like that, but we grew them, and we produced our own seeds. So uh, of a lot of the things that we had, so that the food was probably more um, organic than not. We didn't use any sprays or things on our food either, and the seeds were from years after year after year, where he saved them and then um, would grow it again. And we used to have kagutsa. <laughs> Do you know what that is? <laughs> what is kagutsa? Kagutsa. It's an Italian squash, and I used to hate it. Oh, I used to really hate it. It was so bad. I thought it was bad. Although my daughter, she actually went to the store and bought a kagutsa, one of these Italian squash, and hoped for seeds. And they're huge. They're, they're like, they're like, four feet and they curve and they're green and yellowish green and they're they're big they're huge um she actually bought one hoping to get some seeds out of it because she wanted to grow the kagutsa because it's very hard to find that seed and i don't think i have any of that seed because i didn't like that so i wouldn't have saved any from when i was at home i did save the italian um tomato i have that but those seeds are probably so old now that they may not even germinate. I don't know. They're they're pretty old, and the um. So I would just say, eat more meat. Stay away from carbs. Try to try to limit your carbs. And a lot of people say they're eating healthy. They bought bananas and they bought apples. No, those are high carb. They're yes, there's a natural sugar, but they will. They will oatmeal and, and they eat oatmeal because oatmeal is supposed to help your heart healthy. That they say no. That's another no-no. Um, and corn, corn fattens everything. In fact, I give and corn, I give corn to the chickens when it starts to get cold out because they need something that is slow to slow to burn, and it will produce a lot of heat. That's why I give it to the chickens, and other people give it to their animals to fatten them up when it's time to fatten their animals up. Sometimes they'll give them corn. Um, they also get other stuff too, but. I do give them a little bit of corn when it gets colder around here, just so that they can 
keep their bodies warm because I don't put heat in the chicken house. All oh, this video is all over the place. It went from, I don't know where it went from beating to chickens to everything in between. So that's how the conversations go a lot of times. And if you can keep up, I'm more power to you because I'm all over the place. If not, rewind and, rewind and you can start again and she'll say, ah, oh, but she didn't finish that thought. No, I didn't. I'm sorry. You could, you could always email me or send me a message and say, what were you going to say? Comment. In the comments, sure. Yeah. They can comment. Definitely. I love the comments. I answer every single one of those comments. And sometimes I'm, sometimes it's, yeah, it is my job. I, um, start like first thing in the morning I get up and I have my coffee and I feed the chickens and I take care of the dog and then I I will watch a few videos while I drink my coffee and then I think oh it's 10 30 I better get started because I don't get done with doing those comments and videos until about three o'clock in the afternoon and then I'm I'm really kind of tired at the end of that and I said to my husband I says you know office work is very tiring it was easier to be more physical, but when you're doing this type of stuff, it, it does tire you out. But I like it, so I'll keep doing it. Yeah, you have fun. <laughs> I have fun. You have lots of fun. So until I don't have fun, I keep doing it. And when you get addicted to something or, well, find that it's entertaining like these bracelets I, I'm just finding them so much fun I will make a few and then I'm sure that that will move on to something else there'll be something else that'll catch my eye that I'll say gee I wonder if I can do that and then I will do that and that's how a lot of my crafting has gone different ones have asked if I have an Etsy store I don't even know how to do Etsy I wouldn't even know how to set up anything like that so I haven't done anything like that I just make them and it's not so much enjoy an uh, addiction, it is an, as a, um, not really an obsession, but a... Um, He's looking for a word. Look at that. He can't find it. <laughs> <laughs> I had it And there. I can't help him. <laughs> um, fascination. Oh, a fascination. Yes, yeah. I'm fascinated. Like fascination. when I was making beads, I was making beads like crazy. And then I was making paper pictures with beads and people thought that they were those melt beads. They weren't the melt beads. They were my little pieces of paper that I cut into little strips and I rolled on a needle and I started, um, when I first started doing it, I was using a, a regular pencil with the, with the graphite lead and I noticed that the little different colors would look dirty so I decided I maybe I better use the colored pencil that goes along with that for what for the paper strips that I'm making for the beads for, for, for the mark, making the lines for marking the paper yeah didn't, it, oh I didn't say that up. I'm yeah, sorry I that. pictured it in my head I said it in my brain <laughs> it was what I did is I used to take a piece of paper that was colored paper and use a ruler and I'd make lines on it and those lines I was what I'd cut on to to make the little strips to make the little beads that I wound with the needle and then I would make pictures with those and some day or right now actually I'll show you I can turn the camera off and start again I'll go get one I'm back it didn't take me long I'm sure if you blinked your eyes you, you it was like a magic trick well anyways the beat the paper that I was talking about that I was rolling is here's some of them there's some more. I will. I will. I'll show them and I'll take some beads out. They're, um, these are just paper. Let me open it up. These are just paper. And they're, they're little, whoops, that bead went over where it shouldn't be. And they're, they're just little paper beads that I, I cut the paper in strips and, um, Every time I got a colored paper, and these, a lot of these were from the church when they had an insert in the bulletin. I used to take them out. And then I um, get a picture that I like, and I glue them onto the, onto the um, picture. Now this one looks, to me, looks dirty because I used a regular graphite pencil. Whereas this one, 
I've only done two because I haven't found a picture I want to do any more on. This one I used the colored pencil to um, mark it before I cut it. And then I lay them on there. And um, the one, I put yarn around the outside, I think. Did I? Well, that might have been another one. Yeah, no, this was this one. I put yarn around the outside because it was rather funny looking, and I thought, well, maybe if I put yarn around the outside, black yarn. And then this one I just used regular beads around the outside. But anyways, that's what I do. I got, got kind of crazy with that, and I would keep it on the table. That's like somebody said, I have a very clean kitchen. Well, I don't. I maybe have a clean, I have a, I have a cluttered clitch kitchen. Very cluttered. Very cluttered. Um, if you were to see, if, oh my goodness, I'm, I'm never going to show you. <laughs> it's so bad. I've got, I keep my crafts out because if I put them away, then I wouldn't work on them. And so they just kind of sit there until I get tired of it. And sometimes they're a lot of clutter depending on what I'm working on. Right now, the beads, they're taking up a little space, not too bad, but these paper things, they took up a lot of room because then I had the the paper out, the ruler out, the pencils out, then the scissors. I had a lot of stuff there just kind of there, and when I was making the paper baskets, that was even worse because I had the jars with the stacks of paper that I was winding. If you're doing a craft, it's easier if you don't have to put it away because it's there and if you've got a few seconds you work on it when i was making the indian on the loom the indian beads where you have to use this really skinny needle that i could never thread now because i could never see it but um i used to leave that on the table and then every now and then i'd string some beads on it and weave it through and it was getting done little by little but that's how i do my crafts a lot of times i just keep it there so that i can keep working on it when I feel like it. Well, this video has gotten pretty long and pretty crazy, so I will have to say goodbye, and I will talk to you again tomorrow. Bye-bye.